Good afternoon, everyone. Thank you so much for joining us uh, in our college visit series um, today. And we are very fortunate here to, with us today to have Takira Zajak. And she's gonna be talking with us about the University of Mary Washington and all of the wonderful things that they have to offer. Um, as we go throughout today's session, if you could put any questions that you have down in the chat, and we will make sure to uh, get to them. And with that, Ms. Zajac, I'm gonna go ahead and hand it off to you. Thank you so much for being here. No problem, thank you for having me. So hello all, um, I'm with the University of Mary Washington. Um, I have been with the University of Mary Washington for about 10 years. November makes 10 years there for me. Um, I'm an alum, I was one of their business majors and I am currently in our MBA program for grad school. So. I'm in the same boat with you guys as the virtual learning and I totally get it. So um, the PowerPoint is like a little slideshow and it, it'll kind of keep me on track. So, um, but we'll go ahead and go through. So Mary Wash is located in historic downtown Fredericksburg and I have um, this year a population of about 4,100. We have various academics, um, academic programs that you guys can join and, and check out. So if you guys are looking for any more further information, please feel free to email me and I can get you information on the specific programs. But the one in the top left corner, that was my home and that's the, the business department. Um, and then you have the science department. We also have an education program. There are several different tracks for pre-med um, or pre-health as well as nursing. So if you guys are interested in that, please let me know. Um, and I can get you more information as I said on those. So various academic programs, you guys can do a single major if you'd like. I did that, there's nothing wrong with that. Um, you can do a dual major, a major and a minor. So you have a lot of flexibility with the programs. It's a liberal arts school. And the nice thing about that is you can kind of make your education what you would like for it to be. So in business, as an example, I had to take an ethics class and I'm not a super big fan of ethics. It's just, it's boring to me. I, I'm sorry for anyone that loves it, but for me, I can't. So my ethics class was actually the psychology of aging. So you actually have some different options in that that you can take so that your classes are actually interesting to you and you're not sitting there going, I don't wanna do the homework for this because that's not, that's not gonna be productive nor is it gonna help you. So lots of flexibility with your um, education there. We have 17 different residence halls on campus and I'm what we call a living learning community. So my residence halls and academic buildings are all intermixed. It's not, you don't live on one side of campus and then come over to the other side to learn. They're all intermingled. Um, and we do the suite style, which hopefully some of you have heard of, but usually what it is is you and a roommate are in one room and then two more people are in another room and the four of you share a bathroom. So the four of you make up a suite. Um, so you do have some options. Some of our upperclassmen will live in the two apartment complexes that we have on campus and it's a two year housing agreement. So if you are within 30 miles of my campus, you have the ability to commute if you would like. Otherwise you have a two year housing agreement. After that, we don't kick you off campus. You can stay if you like. About 60% of our, our students do actually remain on campus. So you have the option with 17 residence halls, there's definitely space for all of you. So lots of choices. Um, this is a couple of different photos of campus. Um, with us being in historic downtown Fredericksburg, we're in the residential side of it. So it's a very quiet area. Um, we're not an overly big school. I believe from one end of campus to the other stretches a little over a mile. So you can easily make it from one end to the next. Um, on the top right picture that you see there, that campus, that's campus walk, and it actually connects the entire campus from one end to the other. So no crossing any major streets or anything like that. You're, you're pretty, um, pretty tied in on campus. So that part's for me was great. It's a smaller community, not as much of the hustle and bustle, like I'm not much of a city girl. And so while I started out at VCU, it, it stressed me out. I had a lot of anxiety having to cross all the streets and make sure I could find all my classes because they were not all in that same area. And for some people, you'll have a similar experience. Some of you 
will get into an environment like that and absolutely love it. You'll thrive in it. My brothers both live in Richmond. They love it. That's home for them. Whereas I'm like, this gives me anxiety every time I have to come visit you. And I live in King George. Like I bought a house in the country on purpose. So everyone's got their own safety net. So pay attention in your college searching to the area that you are in as well as to the school. It'll make a big difference in your comfort level. Um, so for traditions on campus, we do have several of them. We are not a football or Greek life school, but fun fact, we have homecoming every year without it. So it, because we can, honestly speaking. So a couple of our other sports that have home games at the time or who we come out and root for, um, we do a devil goat day, which is like the only time the school's divided. If you graduate on an even year, you're a goat. If you graduate on an odd year, you're a devil and we do huge competitions between the group. There's food, music, lots of entertainment, um, which is that bottom left-hand picture that you see there. We also do a club carnival, which is another big tradition on campus where all of the clubs get to come out and sit and chat with you. Um, we have about 150 of them to choose from, so it's a pretty big event, um, but they'll put on music, like the music clubs will do different performances. Some of the dance clubs will do different performances. Um, so you get to actually wander through and, and chat with everybody. So that's another one of our big traditions on campus. So there's a good couple of them to check out, but lots of things to keep you entertained for your four years. I am a D3 uh, school, so difference is no sports scholarships. The one team that is different is my rugby team. They're actually D1. They're really, really good but the rest of the school is D3. I do have varsity sports. Like I said, I have everything but football. And then um, I also have club sports. So if you would still like to play, but don't want the stress of the varsity level, you still have that option. And then we also have intramural sports. So you can strictly just stay on campus and play whenever you, you would like. Um, the bottom right-hand corner is our athletic center. You do have full access to that. So this, this one is actually the top level. And on the bottom level, there's a bunch of weights uh, lifting. There's dance classes in there. There's Zumba classes, cycling. So a lot of different ways to stay in shape because the freshman 15 is a thing and it does get harder to lose it as you get older. Fun fact, so stay in shape. So you do have um, various things to take advantage of there as well. I do merit scholarships, and this will hopefully come as a relief to some of my seniors. The world shut down on you guys, and you guys did not get to take your test this year, and that was a huge stressor um, for a lot of you. I was already a test choice school. I didn't have to change my program for the world shutting down and you guys not being able to take your test. The only program I did have to adjust is nursing because that one was the only one I did that still required test scores. So if you are interested in nursing, if you have a 3.5 GPA or higher, yes, weighted counts, I'm not unweighting your GPA, you can still apply test optional. Um, anything lower than that, I do need you to try and get into the test school, one of the testing dates so that we can see that. For everyone else, I do merit scholarships and it's either your GPA and your test score, which is what the screen shows. Um, if you were within those ranges, then you would qualify for a merit scholarship. The other one is your GPA and the difficulty of your curriculum. So how many AP, IB, dual enrollment, there's an ACE program. Um, if you've gone to a governor's school, any of those classes uh, that you've taken over four years will also qualify you for a scholarship. So you do have some options with that. The other easy scholarship with my school is an admissions interview. Um, that is a 15, 20 minute conversation with one of us admissions counselors. Hopefully you get to talk to me because I am the one that reads your applications. Um, but just in case you can talk to one of my coworkers uh, and it's all about you. So no pop quizzes in there, no math questions. Like the hardest question is generally Tell me a little bit about yourself and give me two fun facts to focus on. And that's only difficult because nobody knows how to answer that when they're put on the spot, which is fair. Um, so you do have a couple of scholarships that you can qualify for in there. And I will put the links for some of those things in the chat after the presentation so that you guys can also have that information. 
you guys aren't out of state, so we will skip that one. But this is the one that does your um, GPA and the difficulty of your curriculum so that you can see what I was talking about for that as well. So there are several different options. You do not have to submit me your test scores if you did not get to take them. Um, if you are registered for one of the later test dates, some of the questions that I've seen so far this year is do I need to wait on submitting my application until I get my scores back? And that's no. As a test choice school, I can review your application without your scores. If you get your scores back and you're like, I killed it, look at this again and tell me if I qualify for anything more. I can check it out and look at it again. And if you do, I can easily change it in the system. So you do not actually have to wait until you get your scores back. For some of you, there's um, the October testing. You may not get your scores back until like December. And then for November and December, you're not gonna get them back until next year. So with the delay, you can still go ahead and submit your application. We can change it later. It's easy enough for me to change it in the system. Okay. So that is the presentation and I will stop sharing my screen um, so that I can give you guys some information in the chat and then answer any questions that you guys may have. So um, 